Okay, in this lesson right here, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how we can characterize the alien that we just brought in from Maya. Before we get started, though, the first thing I'd like to do is share with you what characterize means. In its simplest form, basically, once you characterize a character, it's no longer just a piece of geometry with bones in it or joints in it. It is actually a character as far as Motion Builder is concerned. In other words, Motion Builder actually recognizes this as a character so that we can then use various sources for controlling it, such as a control rig or an actor or even another character. So the bottom line is once you bring a character into Motion Builder to really take advantage of all of the cool features of Motion Builder as far as animation is concerned, you need to characterize your character. Isn't that right, Zach? Sounds cool. All right, so let's take a look at how we can characterize them. First thing, let's look down here in our scene browser and find characters. You'll notice right now that characters is not able to be expanded, meaning that we have no characters in the scene. I mean, at this point, all we've done is we've just brought in some geometry and um, some skeleton joints. Right, there's no actual character here. Exactly. So to place a character in the scene, I'm simply going to come over here to my asset browser and locate, uh, well, there we go, asset browser, locate templates, go ahead and expand it, and then come down to characters. Okay, from there, if you look over on the right-hand side, you'll locate character. All you need to do, let's go ahead, as a matter of fact, let's just kind of zoom in on this a little bit. Let's click on character over here, hold the left mouse button down, and then drag, as Zach said earlier, this is a drag and drop type system. We'll just simply drag it over our alien or over our geometry, and you'll see that it's going to highlight green, indicating that we can make this into a character. So we'll simply go ahead and let go of the mouse button. And two things just happened. One, we got a little pop-up menu right here with the word characterize on it. And also, if you look down your scene browser over here, we already have a character in the scene now. So let's go ahead and characterize this. Though at this point, we don't have to characterize it. But if you remember when we did the lesson in Maya, I made sure that I used proper joints, I used the proper names, etc. So by hitting characterize right now, Motion Builder should recognize everything and automatically characterize it for us. That's cool. So I'll go ahead and click characterize. It'll pause for just a second. As long as we don't have any troubles, everything should have worked fine. And we'll go ahead and verify this now by coming down here to characters. And I'll just double click down here on character. Now, the first thing I'd like to do is simply right click on it in the menu, come down to rename. And let's give this guy a name other than character. How about alien? That sounds pretty good to me. All right, now, by default, generally, you come up to your character settings tab right here. All we need to do is come over here to character definition. Okay, this is where, this is basically where it happens. This is where we help Motion Builder identify your skeletal setup, or we can see that the character's already been characterized in Motion Builder does indeed understand its setup. And in our case right here, you see the checkbox next to characterize, and you'll see everything over here up underneath model is grayed out at the moment. Basically what this means is we did everything right. Motion Builder did recognize what we had, so it took care of the characterization for you. And a control rig was even created, which is really cool. You'll notice the create button over here has been grayed out. Now in a few minutes what we'll do is we'll open up a character that the naming has been a little flawed on. And we'll take a look at how we can go in there and, and fix it. All right. That's cool. Because this goes all the way back to something you said earlier, and that is you could use your own naming if you'd like. Right. Or like if, we, if you already had a character built and you want to actually put it into Motion Builder from, you know, from a, prior, uh, a, a prior project. Exactly. Basically. So how could you go about taking those joints and applying them to the right, right thing? Right. Well, down here, let's go ahead and kind of extend the size of this right here just so we can see a little bit better. Basically, this is my mapping list. And remember when in the last lesson I was talking about uh, all of the different joints that are required and then all of the optional joints that are out there that you can use. Well, you can see right here we've got base, and these are required joints. And if I come over here and I expand this, then you'll see there's hips, left up leg, left leg, left foot. Does some of these look the familiar? The same names we used in Maya. Very good. And you'll notice since I happen to use the same names, basically Motion Builder, when it characterized my alien, it just threw these names in there. Hips, Snapped them all into place. Yep, all the way down. And you'll see now that if we were to come on down a little bit further, there's auxiliary, left toes, right toes, and you'll see some of these are actually being used, neck. In fact, all of these right here are being used. And if we want, want to go down a little bit further, let's say our left hand, since we didn't actually put joints in the hand inside the Maya lesson, we can go ahead and expand it and drop on down a little bit further. And you can see all of the different joints that you can use yeah, when so actually this actually gives us hand. our list of available joints. Exactly. So if you've got the question of, well, how do I know what joint names I can use? 
this is where you need to come. You get a full listing right here, and you're ready to go. Very cool. Okay, now let's just go ahead and we'll go ahead and close that back up. So, again, this is my mapping list, and let's kind of move this down. Let me go ahead and point this out. This is pretty important to know. If I need to make a change to any of this right here, I need to uncheck characterize. Then I can make changes. Then I need to check characterize again to recharacterize it. All right. Okay. So let's go ahead and see how this kind of works to our advantage right now. Let's go ahead and come over here to character settings. Okay. Now we have input type. At this point, Motion Builder understands this character. So I can use one of their ultra cool control rigs. It's just a matter of simply coming over to input type, dragging this down. And we can come down here. You can see that we have several different input types. And we'll just come down here to Control Rig Input. I'll go ahead and select it. And then we'll hit Activate. And look at this. My Control Rig is now activated. If I come over here to Character Controls, at this point, I can simply come in oops, and start selecting things. And we'll go ahead and activate and move them around. OK? Sweet. OK, so anyways, see how that works? I like it. All right, simple enough. Now, next thing I want to do, let's go ahead and kind of pull that on back out here, is go ahead and open up another file that's bad Okay. And see how we can go about fixing it. All right. So let's just come on up here to file and let's Or see. maybe not necessarily bad, just named differently than Motion Builder's naming convention. Exactly. That's what I mean. Yeah. Okay. So in other words, that the characterize is not going to happen automatically and how do you know that it doesn't ha that it didn't happen and how do you go about fixing it? Very nice. So here she comes. Here she comes. All right. And coming coming coming. Because just for the record, I don't think any of my characters have a skeleton that's named quite that well. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and just kind of zoom back here just a little bit and move them on up. Joint 25, joint and 26. Yeah, you'll never let me catch you doing that. All right, so right now you'll see there's no characters in the scene. So what I want to do, same thing we saw a few minutes ago, is again from up underneath Templates, Characters, find my character icon over here. Simply left-click, drag it up and over my geometry, let go, get characterized. Let's go ahead and characterize it. Well, that was quick that time. It was just bloop. That was quick. Mm, that's probably because it didn't actually characterize it. Let's go ahead and come down over here. I'll double click and character. In fact, a good uh, protocol to follow. Let's go ahead and name it. We'll do alien again. Go ahead and hit enter. And now let's go ahead and come over here to the character definition tab again and check it out. This time, characterize has not been checked. So our alien has not been characterized. We don't have a control rig, okay, to work with. All right. If we come back over here, if we go to input type, take a look. We don't even have, we can't even select an input yeah, we type. we can't change that. Because even though we've got a character in the scene, Motion Builder doesn't understand its structure so that it can't apply other things to it, other types to actually drive its, drive its little uh, skeletal hierarchy. I see. Okay. So the, the automatic system that should be going on wasn't because the, the bones were not named properly according to Motion Builder's naming convention. Yeah, well, we've got some problem. We don't really okay. know at the moment. So let's see how we can find out all what right, the problem right. is. I got gotcha. you. Okay, so if I come back over here to character definition, uh, very first place I'm going to come is straight over here into base required. And take a look at this. Well, first of all, everything is not disabled. Okay, oh. we actually see stuff there. And I see a problem. Yeah. Left up leg currently says no model. So this would be like if you were naming it, maybe you missed something. So maybe I missed something. I mean, I know the left up leg is there, but, um, you know, maybe I just accidentally spelled something the wrong way or who knows. So let's see how we can go about fixing that. Let's go ahead and drag this one back down. I'm going to come up here to my viewer. Let's go ahead and come into view, and I'm going to come down and switch this over to a schematic view. Of course, I could have used Control w as well. And then I'll go ahead and hit A to frame this thing up. And then what I need to do is find out what my problem is. And it was with which, what, which guy again? Uh, left up leg. Left up leg. So where's left up leg at? Do do do. Just going to kind of come around and up a little bit higher. Hmm. Left mm. hip. Okay. There's right up leg. But this is left hip. This is wrong. I could go ahead and come in here and rename it. I just double click to select it. Right. Or I could use this name. All I need to do is simply hold Alt down. And while holding Alt, I can left click and drag this guy down here to the area that's bad. Place my mouse over where it says no model right across from left up leg and simply let go. And you see now it says left hip. Okay, so now it designates left up leg within Motion Builder to left hip on your actual exactly. model. Exactly. It now knows that that should be 
used as the left up leg. Well, that saved you a lot of time over having to rename every single bone in your character. Exactly. So at this point, all I need to do now, since I know everything else is good, you could kind of dig down here and make sure there's no other no models found. I just click characterize. I'm now going to get a pop-up dialog that's going to tell me the same thing I told you guys back in the last lesson, and that is the character must be in a stance pose facing the positive Z axis, and it is. That's how we modeled it and set it up over in Maya. So I'll go ahead and click OK and check it out. It characterized. If, now let me go ahead and say this real quick, if something else was wrong, it would tell us. It would tell, still tell us that all of our models have not been set up properly and that it was unable to characterize it. And then we'd need to continue digging down and find out what Keep exactly Keep finding it was. each problem in the list. Exactly. So let's go ahead and come up here to Views, and let's go ahead and switch back over to a perspective view. Now that he's characterized, at this point, we did not get a control rig auto-generated. And even though this particular lesson isn't a big lesson on control rigs, I just want you to see how we can quickly generate one by simply coming over here to the right, to the control rig section, hitting Create. And now it's going to ask, okay, what kind of control rig do you want to create? An FK-IK rig, an IK-only rig, or a cancel, if you want to cancel out of the operation. I'll go ahead and say FK-IK rig. So we'll create it, give it just a second, and we're done. At this point, we've basically done the same thing as if Motion Builder had automatically characterized the whole thing from the beginning. We just had to kind of take a, a couple of extra steps ourselves because the naming was a little... You know, the first couple of times I saw you do this, you know, I remember doing this kind of thing in Maya, actually setting up the IK and the rigging and getting everything going. Right. It's scary how easy this is. I know. <laughs> I know. I love it. So uh, let's go ahead and come over here. Let's have some fun real quick. Uh, we can come back to our input type. Let's go ahead and switch this back over. Let's come down to a control rig input. We can go ahead and activate it. And there you go. We've got our control rig. And There's we our color coding. And we can start manipulating them. But let's go ahead and do a couple of other things now. If we come over here back to our scene browser and we ex expand scene, there's reference. Remember reference from in the lesson before in Maya? Yeah, we grouped together the skeleton and the geometry exactly. and we have the node reference. Exactly. Well, here's where it's going to work in our advantage. If I expand right now reference, you'll see up underneath it, there's my high-res alien, and then there's hips. That's the, that was the root of the right, actual right. joints. So I can just come in here and double-click on reference and check this out. Oh, that's cool. So now I can reposition them. So let me go ahead and just kind of move this down. I'm going to simply rotate around, make sure I've kind of got them above the ground, because I want to go ahead and spend just a minute and talk about something else that's kind of cool. Let's come back down here real quick to characters. Double-click on Alien again. Now, if I slide down over here, Floor Contact. Oh, Let's wow. Let's turn this on. Okay. Now, if I come back up and double-click on Reference, now if I move this guy down... Oh, wow, that is nice. Pretty neat, huh? And we've got these little foot markers that allow us to basically specify where the bottom of the foot is. Okay. So if I want to, I could just quickly come in here and say view. Let's go to an orthographic view. And how about let's go to producer right. And then we can just go ahead and spin just a second and zoom on in right here just so that you can see how we can go about doing this. It's real simple. There's my foot markers. All I need to do is just left click on it. And this selects all the way across so that basically it's not just this one foot. There's uh, basically one for each side of the heel, and then the other foot's got one for each side of the heel. Okay, so you're selecting four. So I just selected four. Now I can just come in here and reposition this guy around. Hang on one second. Let's just go ahead and come back over here, and let's put this on drag. And go ahead and move this down to the bottom corner right about there. And then I can come over here and grab this one right here, kind of push him back to about the ball of the foot right there, and then come over here and grab the front one and move it, let's say, right about there for the, the toe pivot area. And by doing that, now, well, let's go ahead and spend just a second and switch over to a, another orth orthographic. This time, let's go ahead and do a front view, and we'll go ahead and, again, zoom on back in. And these guys can be scaled as well if you wanted to uh, simply come over here. And this is pretty neat if I just hit S and then scale, you can see that all of them are scaling, okay? So right. now let's go ahead and hit T, and watch this. This is so neat. I'm going to move this one right here to position it over here to, to define where the outer part of my foot is, and watch what happens to my other foot marker. So we'll just move this on X. Oh, I see. Isn't that great? It mirrors the translates. So we'll go ahead and grab the inside right here and define where the inside of the foot is. So now we've got our foot marked well all the way around, okay? So I'll go ahead and control E. We're back over into a perspective view. Our foot's now set up properly. And if I want, I can come back up here to reference. And since I happen to be using 
Oh, that is nice. So it's very good. Now, you can also use geometry as well so that you can have your, your character's feet respond properly to geometry, but that's not the idea of this lesson. This lesson is all about character. Like if he was climbing characters. stairs, his feet would actually go on the staircases? Yeah, there's, yeah, there's exactly. There's some really neat things we can do, but absolutely. Now, let's go ahead and uh, real quick, let's have two seconds worth of fun. Uh, one of the uh, tutorial files that you can download uh, from the Kadara website for Motion Builder has to deal with actually mapping a character to a character. So I just want to, just real quickly, for a little bit of fun, let's go ahead and drag this BVH file in. And let's go ahead and come over here to import. Let's just import all takes. We're just going to be real quick about this. Just to show the power of working with Motion Builder, I mean, you guys have now seen from the very beginning, from the last lesson, I took my geometry, I applied joints in them, it didn't take long at all, I did my skinning, I then brought them over here into Motion Builder, which was a snap, then inside of Motion Builder, I characterized them, which happened instantaneously, because I did all of my naming properly, now... You saw that with the click of a button, I've got a control rig that I can use to drive him, or I can map him to another character as well. And this is just, this is just a load of fun. So let's go ahead and come back down here real quick to our characters. You see we've got two characters now, and basically what we want Alien to be driven by another character type. So what I'm going to do is come over here to Input Type, and I'm going to want, basically what I want is the input type to be from another character. So I'll select Character Input. Now, my characters that are available down here is just Alien and BVH, and so since this is the Alien, the only input source that I'll have available is going to be BVH. So I'll go ahead and select it, and as soon as I activate it, he's going to snap into the same pose. But what's really nice about this reference, though, is I can simply select my reference, move him on down. I can't go below the floor. Check it out. Here it comes. Oh, he still responds to the floor. So That's he still cool. responds. And now with this very little amount of effort... And here he goes. Very smooth. Doesn't that look great? And let's go ahead and turn on looping over here. So we can loop around. Let's go ahead and rewind that real quick. And let's play. All right. So now some of the other things we can do. Of course, this is going to be a little sluggish for those of you guys watching yeah, back on I wish on you guys BTM. could see this in the real viewport. But with, with reference selected down here, I'm just going to go ahead and tap R. Let's go ahead and rotate him in another direction altogether. And we'll just rewind this back to the beginning and play again. Check this out. He still moves properly. He still moves properly, now walking in the direction we've now pointed him in. That's amazing. And, I mean, not only that, there's a lot of things we can do. And, again, we're now kind of getting above and beyond things that we wanted to cover in this lesson. But I could even go as far right now as let's just come up here and scale him up if I wanted to. So I could scale him. Oh, let's not get too giant. And we'll go ahead and move him back down. Let's see, right about there. And let's go ahead, again, we'll just simply rotate them. And now we've got uh, somewhat of a giant. Let's go ahead and move this down a little bit. And let's go ahead and zoom back. Rewind. And look at that, though. The animation still mapped yeah. properly. That's the beauty of characterizing. Once it's characterized, it just understands. And Motion now, builder now that can he's take larger, care of things. That's awesome. And now that he's larger, he's actually taking bigger steps. Yeah, exactly. It's, just, it's The animation's basically been scaled, so it works. That's it's the crazy. same crazy. Okay, so, you know, basically this is all I wanted to talk about in this lesson. It's like now that I have actually brought in a character from another package and he's set up right, how do I make Motion Builder recognize him by characterizing him? And then once he's characterized and registered as a character over here, what can I do with him? How can I come over here and simply have different input types drive him? And we also took an extra step to show how to go about dealing with joints being named the wrong thing and correcting that and recharacterizing it and creating a control rig. Okay? All right. So that's going to conclude this lesson right here. Hope you guys got a lot out of it. Thanks.